your children. We exalt and praise. You are the omnipotent. You are the omniscient. You are the omnipresent. There is no one besides you. And there is no other God. That's why this afternoon, we are worshiping you. So this afternoon, may our worship ascend unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Amen. Miracle working God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are a living God. Amen. We thank you for accepting our worship. Immortal. There is none like you. We give you all your glory for Amen. accepting our worship. And our worship has ascended unto you like a smelling incense. Unto thee, O oh Lord, with you all things are possible. And we worship you in Jesus Christ, your mighty name. Amen. We have exalted and worship you. Amen. 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 Beloved, we give him all his glory. Let us keep on standing before his word come. So, beloved, I welcome you all. And I'm going to pray. And after that, we'll be seated before him. Our Lord and our King, this is another day that you have given us a word. Father, let your word come forth. Spirit of the living God, I am just a filthy clay standing before you. So, Father, Holy Spirit, use this vessel to glorify the Almighty God and let your word come forth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We do all things are possible because we need a word. And may the word come and sanctify us. Amen. You are always ready. We thank you, gracious, mighty Savior, for giving us a word. And we need a word because this is what the souls need. So this afternoon, take all your glory. In the mighty Amen. name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Let us be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I welcome each and every one. This is another day because it has been a week. The part of the hour on the speaker, be over Chiana Wallace, be over Chiana Walu, Nama. Why? It is almost a week now before. So God has given us a breath because He's the owner of life. So without wasting time, today it's about exhortation. And the title of the message is about a marriage. Because it is him who instituted it in the Garden of Eden. So without wasting time, let us go to the book of Genesis. Genesis 2 and the verses 24. We serve a mighty God. Today, we are going to hear a lot. Especially about my own life concerning marriage. So, beloved, without wasting time, let us hear the word of God. That is Genesis 2 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and join to his wife, and they shall become one. A man is the head of the house, and it is God who has created the man. And this man will leave the parents, the mother and the father, to join a wife. And beloved, when you are trying to find a wife, number one, you have to ask God. It is God who will let you find a right woman other than that. You will choose anyhow. And when you choose anyhow, beloved, you are bringing a problem because that person is from a different family. You don't know that person and you have not asked God. And anything that God is not inside, you are not going to get a good result. That's why he said, therefore, a man will leave 
his father and his mother and join a wife. So beloved, first of all, we have to ask God. And this is how it is. In the olden days, people don't ask God, even myself. I can tell you, while I was about to marry, I didn't consult God. By that time, I didn't know God. So I went for anyhow. People are getting married. So I also, I jump into it. And beloved, anything that you jump into it, it's not going to work. Because you did not acquire from God Almighty, the one who created you, the one who knows you, the one who will give you the best. You jump into anything because you see your friends are getting married. And this will not let you go afar. So beloved, I jump into the marriage. Today, I'm trying to tell you about my own because I sinned before God. I did not ask God, the one who knows me, the one who created me. So I jumped and I fell in love with this man. But how far did I go? After having two children, the marriage was broken. We came back, we came to America, but going back to Ghana, there was no marriage. So beloved, if I have asked God, I will have a long life relationship, but I didn't ask God. So the moment I get to Ghana, the marriage collapsed. And this same person who say he loved me, my things were thrown outside. So I have to leave and then work my way through, coming back to America again. So who lost? It was I, because I didn't ask God. And God was not involved. So this, am I going to blame God? No. So it is time for me. I have learned my lesson. I fall short. I didn't ask God. I sinned before God. So anything we do, which we don't acquire from God, it will be a burden. It will never last. It will collapse. And there you come back to what? Square one. Hallelujah. Amen. We continue. That is 1 Corinthians 7. And let us hear concerning about marriage. Marriage is something if you don't take care, you will fall short because you did not ask God. And God institute marriage in the Garden of Eden. So, beloved, anything that we do, we have to ask God. Let us hear 1 Corinthians 7. No, we start from 6, 17 to 20. Let us hear the word of God. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. If you are joined with the Lord concerning your marriage, because it's three people that get married, the man, the wife, and God Almighty. So if God is in the marriage, the three of you will be together. But if you don't invite God, it is you and the woman. And at the same time, there will be a problem. Because the person that you are married, you don't know. He is not from your same family. He is not your sister. So she also has a different character. But because he wanted to marry you, that character is hidden. So the moment you join together, live in the same house, you will see the character will come. Whether he has a good character, whether he has a, a, a drunkard, whether he is a thief, whether he is a lazy woman, everything will be exposed. So beloved, it is three people that get into marriage. Hallelujah. We continue. Verse 18. Please search for immorality. Mama Gloria, I'm going to say that you know, Mike, no, I didn't know. Why do you need to do that? Uh, should I check the small one? Oh, may come, Mama Gloria. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. 
beloved, let's continue concerning sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality is a sin against his own body. Beloved, if you are not married and you are fornicating, oh, I have a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend, you are wasting your body. It is a sin before God. We don't have to do that. If you want to marry, God say, get a wife. And then you can have any sexual thing with the wife. But beside that, girlfriend, boyfriend, it is a sin. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. Who will rescue you? If you fall into the hands of God, there is no one. So, beloved, he is talking about sexual immorality. We don't have to fornicate. Oh, I have seen a girlfriend. I wanted to tell this girlfriend before I can marry her. It is a sin. You fall short before the glory of God. So this afternoon, uh, Paul is telling us that Paul is no more around. It is you and I. So we have to be aware. Fornication. God does not want that. So this afternoon, he is telling us, let us continue. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you when you have from God and you are not of your own? Beloved, it is the Holy Spirit that lives in us. So the more you fornicate, the Holy Spirit cannot abide in you because the body is not clean. The body is a temple for the most high God and you are fornicating. So do you expect the Holy Spirit to abide in you? There is no way. Holy Spirit, our comforter, he does not live in a filthy place. Even our own self in physical, if your house is so filthy, are you comfortable? You are not, especially we the women. If our kitchen is so filthy, how are you expecting people to come and see your house? Everything of you is so filthy. So if our body is so filthy, the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our teacher, our guide, our friend, he will not live in a filthy body. He will leave the body. So this afternoon, our body is a temple of the Most High God. And the more we set ourselves for the Holy Spirit to live in it, anything that we pray, anytime, anywhere we are going, oh, the favor, everything, he will do it for us. So beloved, let us be aware of what we are doing with this body. Because anything that we do, we will be accountable for it. Like I said, my first marriage, I did not consult God. I just went in it. And then what happened? The thing collapsed. I sinned before God. So this afternoon, I am asking, or this afternoon, Mama. the word has come. We don't have... Uh, okay, when we get to Ghana, or oh, see, my boy Jamai, she said, he left me here and went to Ghana. And then he said, while I was here with the children, he said, I, fornic uh, 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 I fornicated. So I, I tried to tell him everything. He did not agree. I did it. Like I said, that know, time, when you listen, not, no, not Ghana, while I was here. But I don't know, he I don't know. Like I said, prophet, that time, I didn't know God. I, that's why I said I sinned before God. I didn't know God. So I sinned before God. And number two, like I said, that marriage, I did not invite God 
to be part of it. The man I saw him, oh, I, I want to marry you. I took him to my father. He did whatever he has to do. Then I joined him here. But the marriage wasn't from God. After oh, some oh, years. Mame, Obia, Obia, why you want to be a cop, Papa, no, Mame, we are going to be a warrior. And you are going to be a warrior. 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 Prophet, what I'm saying is, when I saw him first, I should have prayed about it. And I make us a better now, my grandma. Who will now go by grandma? And I make us a. It could be that time, no. Maybe I wanted to come to America, so I said, let me take it like that. I have now, as I said, I will turn out Papa and Tina Ware, Bam and Tina. Yes, Jamino. And teach them, yes, that's our mom by Bamana. I'm mom by a Miss and Yamu or Papa or Bawano. And I said, oh, uh, okay, that man too, he didn't know God. So two in one. To our preaching, no matter. Okay. So, beloved, this is how it went. We continue. Verse 20. For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in the body and your spirit when when which are of God, beloved. The more we set ourselves, if I have known this by that time, there is no way I would do this because that time I didn't know Christ. So this afternoon, there is God telling us in First Corinthians 7, and now we have to know so that we can teach our children, our children's children, that when you do this, God will punish you. So the more we can tell our children, our generation, that we shouldn't do that. Marriage is once. When you marry one man, you are like a brother or sister, and it will take you to the end. And it will, God will glorify you. You don't have to marry and separate and, and then stop. We don't have to do that. And the more we do that, we commit a sin before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 7. Oh, sorry. 1 Corinthians 7. Now, Concerning things which are written of you, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Beloved, see, it is good. And that time, if I knew the word of God, there is no way I would let a man touch me. That's why the Bible is telling us, 1 Corinthians 7, 1, is saying, now, concerning the things which I wrote to you, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Beloved, we fall short, especially if we don't know God. We become short because we take it anyhow. And you can't take it anything anyhow. First of all, we are not on our own. We belong to Christ. And the more we know him, we will run from sin. So this afternoon, the book of 1 Corinthians 7, 1 is telling us that we should not touch a woman or a man too. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and such woman have his own husband. So beloved, one man, one wife. One husband, one wife. That's why you don't have to fornicate. If you love your husband, you are not going to do this against the whole body and against your soul. So this afternoon, Paul is telling us, 
we continue. Hallelujah. Let each man have his own wife and each woman have his own husband. Let the husband render to his wife with affliction due to him, likewise also a wife to the husband. So beloved, some women, I did not do that. If they have to have sex with their husband, they charge them. Beloved, there are some people telling people that for me, anytime I have to have sex, my husband has to pay me. Beloved, it is a sin. And also, some women, when they are going to bedroom, they wear trousers. Beloved, how can you do that? You said this is your husband. And then going to bed, the two of you are sleeping in one room. And then at the same time, wearing pants. Does it please yourself? Does it please your husband? You cannot do that. You can this because your body, it belongs to your husband. The husband that you have stand before God and tell God, this is the man I want to live the rest of my life with. You cannot charge your husband when it comes to sexual thing in the bedroom because the body is for him and also his body is for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us continue. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his body, but the wife does. Beloved, it is written here. So those who try to be that, oh, this is my body, it is a lie. The Bible is telling you and I right here. Your body belongs to who? Your husband. And your husband too. The body belongs to your wife. You don't have to go outside. When it comes to fornication, it's not the woman alone. It is also the men. They also do that. If you love your wife, sincerely you marry your wife, it is only your wife. There is no other party. The wife that you are living with, the wife that cook for you, the wife that is your friend, the wife who is your sister, you don't have to go outside. Because that outside, you don't know what person he is. So this afternoon, Paul is telling you and I, there is no Paul. It is you and I right now. So beloved, let us be aware. Hallelujah. We continue, verse 5. Do not deprive one another, except when concerned of a time when you may have yourself of fasting and prayer and coming together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Beloved, the only time that whenever the two of you are praying together, that is the time you cannot deprive your husband or you refuse your husband. Apart from that, you cannot do that. So beloved, the Bible this afternoon concerning marriage, a sin, like I said, I have sinned. And I tell God, may God forgive me since I became to know Christ because it's a sin that we all commit. I am telling you mine. I don't know about yours. So beloved, the Bible is telling us that when you are married, he is your sister. He is your friend. He is everything. You share things together. There are men. They have, if they want to build them, they will hide the husband. husband will do the same thing. They will hide so that their wife will not know all this, it doesn't glorify God. You say the woman is your wife. Why don't you share things together? Why don't you all the time communicate together? Don't try to hide things from your wife or from your husband. Other than that, you will be at fault. So this afternoon, beloved, 
with one accord. The word has come. I have seen my fault. I don't know about yours. So this afternoon, Paul is telling us that when we are married, it is instituted by God Almighty in the Garden of Eden. So beloved, let us know of this. We continue. That is First Peter 3 and the verse is 1. Wives, likewise, submit yourself unto your husband, that even if some do not obey the word, they without the word, they might be won by the conduct of their wives. Beloved, as a wife, we have to be submissive to our husband. Some women, they are more than the men. When the man will utter one word, the woman will utter about 10. So beloved, this is not submissive. We should be submissive to our husband because our husband, he is our friend. He is our brother. So let us treat our husband. This is concerning the women. Let us be submissive to our husband. Obey them, love them, cherish them because you love him. I haven't seen a woman or a man who has married a, his or her enemy. It never happened. You love the guy. You love the person. That's why the two of you have joined together. So, beloved, let us be aware. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We continue. Our last verse is Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. And it's Proverbs 18, and the verse is 22. Let us hear the word of God. Hallelujah. He who finds a wife has a good thing and obtains a favor from the Lord. Beloved, when you find a good wife, you find a good thing before the Almighty God, and it will be a blessing. You share together. And God will bless the whole family because you have found a good thing. You have found a good wife. And anything, whatever you are doing, bringing your children, they will be aware that, oh, my father, my mother, they are like brothers and sisters. So this afternoon, the word has come forth. So this afternoon, what are we doing? Do we fall short in our marriages? especially the women, do we listen to our husband? Do we be submissive to our husband? The word has come forth. So beloved, sit down and think about wherever you fall short. With God, all things are possible so that we go before God and ask for forgiveness. And with God, all things are possible. We give him all his glory for giving us a message like this because a marriage if your marriage is not right before God, you will fall short before God. So this afternoon, he has given us a way. We thank him for allowing us to hear his message because we all need the message from God. May his will shall be done. In Jesus Christ, your mighty name, your word has come forth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved. We thank the Lord for the message. We are going to stand up and pray. First of all, wherever we fall short concerning our, mass, our marriage, it is a sin. So this afternoon, we are going before God. Holy Spirit is with us on this platform and ask for forgiveness wherever we fall short. Wherever we are not treating our husbands right, wherever we are not treating our wives right, it is a sin before God. So, beloved, let us open our mouth and ask for forgiveness.
So if we are following our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to humble ourselves in every situation. So this afternoon, we are before the Holy Spirit. We are telling him, Holy Spirit, humble us. Give us. We need to humble ourselves in humility. So beloved, one accord, let us ask. He is with us. So let us pray. And then there you go. Lord Jesus, we need to be in your situation. Yadia <laughs> Odo <laughs>
and also upon the line. May our eyes be open and also our ears. That is death. We cannot hear from God. So this afternoon, we are going to go and tell, we are telling the Holy Spirit, our spiritual eye. May he help us to open it and also our ears. As our eyes have been blind for a long time, in the spiritual realm, we can see. And also we cannot hear. So beloved, let us go to Holy Spirit and tell him, we need our eyes to be open. Shall we pray? And our ears. and
Amen. We are praying. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principality, powers, darkness, domain, Satan and his forces. So whatever, any hindrance, any tribulation that we fall onto it, because that's what they do. They want someone to fall. So this afternoon, we are telling the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our teacher, our captain on the line, so that he will take our spirit to go wherever they have hit us, what mirror they are using to monitor our life. So this afternoon, Holy Spirit is leading us. So beloved, let us pray so that any altar, any COVID, anywhere they have tied our spirit. May the Holy Spirit release it for us. Let us. And then we go. Oh, do you feel more than you feel? Amen. 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 Oh, do for him, oh, who for him, amen. I rather do my own, my uncle Pony, my bank, a rather do my do my do my do my. I rather my own one more day, 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 my own so <laughs> My home, 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 Oh, Papa, Oh, 
Amen. Amen. We are praying, not leaving our children. The things that we couldn't do. No. We are telling the Holy Spirit to let our children ourselves to make it make time. So we have a good one. Let us pray for our children so that the Almighty God, the blessing that we were not able to get it or how far we couldn't go, may the blessing be upon our children. Because Abraham prayed for his child and Isaac, he excelled. Isaac prayed for his children and also Jacob and Esau, they also excelled. So this afternoon, with one accord, let us pray for our children so that God will bless them. When <laughs> Nanamidomacoma, <laughs> 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 
Amen. Beloved, we have two more prayer to go. This prayer, we are asking the Holy Spirit to give us the strength and also to give us a long life. It is the honor of life. And also our names, may it be written in his book. Other than that, all what we are doing, if our names are not in his book, so this afternoon we are praying for long life and also to give us a good health and also our names to be written in the book of life. Let us pray. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. We are praying for the pillar of Christ to enlarge our coast so that he will bring his people from afar near. And also, we are praying for prophets that whatever God has shown him concerning his residency, may they handle the key for his new place so that he will have a residence with a number. And each and every one, if you want to visit him, we can go there. And also, your heart desire, what you want God to do for you this afternoon. And at the same time, we are telling God to gather all what we have laid before him and our blessings, may he give it to us. And then we thank him. and some what I will yet. I go upon him about 
Mighty Jehovah, you are the king of kings. As your children have put their hand on their chest, you control life. And Father, this afternoon, what we are asking, may you give us a long life. Because with you, all things are possible. Father, we need that. So that, Father, our soul will be established with you. Have mercy. Anyone on the platform who is sick, may you heal him. Because you are the healer. So this Amen. afternoon, come and take control. With you, all things are possible. We give you all your glory and honor. You are the agent of this. May your name be exalted. For giving us another day like this. Unto thee, O Lord, with you, all things are possible. In Jesus Christ, your mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Okay.